$60,000 still buys you a decent amount of stuff these days. It can buy you an avocado toast from your favorite cafe every weekend for about 30 years. You can go and buy 15,000 coffees, which if you had one every single day would be enough to last you around about the same amount of time. Or you can have both every weekend for 25 years. And in the wake of the recent pandemic, the Australian government has stepped in and has created the scheme that helps first home buyers get into their first home in a capital city in Australia for as little as $30,000 or half a Bitcoin. Now, let's have a look at what that involves. How's it going guys? My name is Jack and today I want to talk about the first home loan deposit scheme, which is a scheme that allows a first home buyer to put down a 5% deposit on their first home and not get stung with stamp duty or any LMI. Now, to understand how it all works, you need to understand the multiple parties that are at play with this particular scheme. So first, we've got the Australian government, we've got their minion, um, their sector, that's very catchily named National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation. That's too long, I'm not gonna use that again. Let's just call them NIFIC. You've got institutional lenders, um, such as banks or private equity that are providing the loans for these purchases. And then you have people like us, the buyers. Now, the Australian government is in a bit of a pickle. Prior to the pandemic, they were talking about having a year in the black, a profitable year for the government. And then obviously that didn't go down. To keep the economy ticking over, and to stimulate job growth as well as just general spending, the Australian government came up with this great idea. Let's stimulate the biggest industry that we have in real estate and property. There's been a lot of outcry as to how expensive property is in Australia. And a lot of it is coming from coffee drinking, avocado toast eating millennials. They say things like, oh, it's just so hard saving for a deposit. I can't just stop going to brunch. I just love hitting the like button on Jack's videos because he's so funny and insightful. So the Australian government does the big old handball to the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation. Uh, it's too long, they just keep calling them NIFIC. So NIFIC, tasked to sort out these entitled troublemakers that can't decide if they want Uber Eats or Menu Log for dinner, can't decide which place they want to go to for brunch, but is more than happy to get into debt that's going to tie them down for the next 30 years. So NIFIC, who is responsible for affordable housing and all the research when it comes to the supply and demand of housing in Australia um, to basically provide that information to the government, NIFIC came up with an idea that will be able to service such buyers. What if they could purchase a property with a 5% deposit and not be stung with any of the additional fees that come with owning a house and that first transaction. So they came up with the first home loan deposit scheme. That's a little bit too long as well. I feel like I need to come up with something. Let's say F holds, let's call it F holds. So the plan was simple. Allow first home buyers to buy their first home with a 5% deposit. NIFIC or essentially the government acts as the guarantor for the loan so that the lender does not charge any LMI or mortgage lender's insurance fees to you as a purchaser. As a result, banks make more money because they are charging interest on a slightly bigger loan. People like me in the construction industry keep our jobs and snotty millennials who are yet to hit the like button get to live in their first home and not complain about how rent is dead money. All seems great, right? But like they say, there is no such thing as a free lunch. There's quite a number of caveats that come with this particular scheme. So let's just quickly run through all of them. So firstly, the scheme has a maximum purchase price cap of $600,000 in capital cities within Victoria and $700,000 for capital cities in New South Wales. You'll have to have a look at the link in the description for what the maximum purchase price cap is in your area. 
Secondly, there is income restrictions as to who is eligible for the scheme. So as an individual, the maximum amount of money you can earn in a salary job is $125,000 a year, or as a couple, it is $200,000 collectively. Thirdly, is that you have to move into this house within six months of settlement date, and then you have to live in it for as long as this house is part of the scheme or as long as NIFIC is a guarantor to your loan. So the only way to get NIFIC off your loan is to reduce the LVR or the loan to value ratio of your house to 80% or less. Now this can be achieved in two ways. One is either your property goes up in value or two, you pay down the loan quicker than what normally would be expected but the best thing is the combination of both. And last but not least, there are certain areas and suburbs that just aren't part of the scheme where they've either require a slightly higher deposit or they are completely blacklisted. Most of these suburbs are suburbs where they have an excessive amount of apartment stock or complete overdevelopment um, in the housing sector. And so there's a lot of risk for the lender to be lending you 95% of the purchase price because they basically are significantly more exposed in this particular scheme. And of course, there's all these other little bits and pieces of eligibility of Australian citizen, you need to be more than 18 years old. I've also linked the full eligibility requirements in the link in the description. Now let's look at a real life example with some of these numbers. Let's say you have a budget of $550,000, which is enough to say, get your very average two bedroom apartment within that kind of middle to outer ring in Melbourne. Now with no LMI, no stamp duty and a 5% deposit, you'd only need $27,500 as a deposit plus a few grand of savings to help you pay for your legal fees as well as your moving costs. So for a total of $30,000 or basically half a Bitcoin, at a home loan fixed rate of 2.79% for the next five years, you'd basically be paying $2,144 a month or roughly $495 a week on your $522,500 loan. Now, your $495 a week is broken up into $280 of interest payments and then $215 of essentially fixed savings that is going towards the principal payment of your home loan. Um, I mean, of course, this doesn't take into any consideration for council fees, strata fees, and anything else that come as part of being a homeowner, but it's essentially cheaper than renting. At the end of the day, the Australian government is doing what they can to help stimulate the economy and also encourage first home buyers with decent salaries, but just not enough deposit to get into their first home. The side effect from the scheme though, is that housing has become even more unaffordable. Now that people that didn't have enough money to buy half a Bitcoin are now competing for properties in the $600,000, $700,000 range. So don't be surprised when you go to an auction and you see a property that probably would have gone for 580 sell for around about 601 or 602 just so the first home buyers that are part of the scheme are being eliminated as competition. However, all that being said, I can't see a better opportunity for first home buyers to get into the market than the one right now. We have extremely low interest rates, a complete border shutdown that prevents overseas investors and travelers coming in. If you like this video and if it was helpful for you, it would be amazing if you guys can hit the like button, subscribe, uh, and let me know what you want to see next. And thank you very much for watching. See ya. How's it going guys? My name is Jack and today I want to talk about the first home loan.